Yo, what's going on, guys? Uh, I thought it'd be fun to just go live and, um, you know, show you what I kind of do every day. <laughs> um, sometimes I think all you guys get to see of what I do here at Radium and, like, you know, the content stuff. I think all you see is, like, me talking about plugins and, you know, talking about what you guys should do um, and giving you tutorials and things like that. But the truth is a majority of my job is making music for a living, right? So whether I'm making my own records or I'm working with a publisher or a sync agency or whatever, music house, um, writing music, writing music is what I do. <laughs> so writing music, mixing music, producing music, all that stuff is what I do every day. Okay. Uh, making the content for you guys is something I love doing. I love teaching. So today I just want to take you through some of the things I do daily, right? So constantly, um, I start new projects, right? So whether it's for me personally, for my records, or for a client I'm working with, or for a commercial or some sort of uh, record label or whatever, right? So I'm constantly producing new stuff. And what I try to do is I make a daily habit of it. So I try to write something every day. And a lot of the times I like to just start completely scratch, blank slate, right? Like I have a logic session and a synth, you know what I mean? So this is kind of how I might start something, right? And uh, I find it most effective to start my projects at um, a melody or something I hear in my head away from the computer. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Um, kind of like maybe thinking about something or like humming something or I wake up with a melody idea or a chord progression kind of idea. Um, and then sometimes I just like to sit down and see what comes out. And I think that's really important to experiment and see what's flowing through you and how things are going in your head or just like what would come out if you just picked up a sound and you started going through sounds and got inspired. So that's what I'm going to do today. And I like to write something every single day. Um, just to keep the muscle going, right? Now, truth be told, I've been putting together studios for the last uh, couple weeks, so I haven't been writing every day. So this will be really interesting because I haven't written something in a few days now. Um, so I'm just going to start from scratch and we're going to see where this goes. So typically what I do is I start with a BPM in mind. Um, maybe I might mess around with some chords, right? Like, for example, I might take this out to 16 bars or not have a loop point at all. I might just be like, hey, I'm going to just freestyle this. And I'm going to go through some sounds, and I'm just going to start to uh, vibe out and see what I can find. So let's do that. Thank you. 
So I really like this sound right here. This is a really, really cool sound. And now I kind of want to mess around with some, some like arping stuff. I think this sound would sound really cool with an arp. Uh, what plugin I'm using, this is from Cradle Audio. It's called The Prince. It's really, really dope. Like it's one of my favorite synths. It's uh, very inspiring, you know? Like it's, it's good to start stuff with. Uh, great for hip hop, trap, soul, pop, um, synth wave, synth pop you know, that kind of stuff. It is uh, kind of sampled. Um, like basically you have two layers and they're both just like sampled analog synths from uh, a collection of synths. So from Frank Dukes. So it's really cool. And some cool filtering options and things like that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna start to ARP it. I'm gonna go in and just open up the arpeggiator uh, built into Logic. And I really like the bounce back and forth here, uh, either this or this. I really like this and then you can draw in the pattern and you can figure out like a grid maybe you want to do like you know let's go like five six something like that maybe you can do like a little uh you know this is just like the velocity so it goes doop, boop, 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 you know um and then with the options i like to kind of mess around with the note length as well i think that's really cool um so let's check this out and let's try to like figure out a cool uh, BPM and stuff and a, and a cool key, right? Cause I'm constantly thinking about the vocals in the end. I don't, I don't typically make beats to like, just make beats. Um, you know, I want to make songs is basically what I'm doing here. And sometimes I do make like compositions, you know, but it's typically going to be for a specific thing. I'm like, I'm going to make stomp clap rock for, you know, sync licensing or, I'm going to make a, a trap beats for rappers or whatever. Like you, you have to have something in mind when you're making music. Uh, for this, I'm making music to maybe sing on top of it and put a top line on. So let's mess around with this harp. And as I start to mess around with the ARP, I might I might switch the sound now, you know? Because sometimes you're like, oh, this is a cool sound. But then you start ARPing and you're like, it's not that cool of a sound in an ARP. Um, and the way I do that typically is I'll just like duplicate the track. Because the reason being is so I can keep that idea and that sound because maybe I like it as a lead and I'll just turn the ARP off. Like I really like this as like a cool like counter melody kind of thing. Um, now I'm going to go back and I'm just going to find a cool sound for the uh, for the ARP.
Okay, and then I might actually just put the chord progression down without the ARP on um, and see if I can cool find a cool little uh, progression. Then turn on the ARP and start to mess around with the sound design. So a lot of people like to start with just a piano, right? Um, this is just me like making sure that I have a vibe for the track. Like I don't like to start with piano because then all of a sudden you don't know if that song is going to work outside of piano. And a lot of people write like that. They're like, oh, I'm going to do everything on piano. And then you take it out the piano and you're like, this sounds cheese ball. Like it doesn't sound good. I don't know. Like it's just not meant for a synth or it's not a cool line in on a guitar. You know what I mean? So I'm looking for harmonic structure right now. And also BPM. Like I feel like 120 is just like in a weird in-between phase. So I'll probably want to like increase this maybe to like 135 or so. That's what I'm hearing in my head. I like hearing like like I'm just hearing that. So 130, 130 feels good to me. So and a lot of times I just like I I do that. You know what I mean, <laughs> bro? Just make the beat sheesh. <laughs> You're hella funny, man. This is not uh, a live to, um, you know, show you guys how to make a beat in five minutes, just so you know. So I see, got it. You can get out of here if you don't like it. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Some weird, 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 uh, like streaming issue here. Give me a second. It's like acting up. Acting crazy on me. It's all. All right, let me see if I can just change the. I don't know what the what the deal is, but some streaming thing. I'm just gonna save this actually. Oh, let's call this uh, cook up. YouTube. All right, put this on desktop. All right, let's relaunch Logic here. Fun stuff. Try to help you guys out, give you some game, and I can't even get the Logic to work. Always cool. So what's up with you guys? You guys making music today? What's up, Kev? How you doing, dude? It's good to see you. So yeah, I'm on uh, I'm on uh, Ecamm Live. I'm like streaming. So sometimes I have weird like streaming errors when I'm doing this like sketching on Logic Pro and doing live, which kind of sucks, kills the vibe. But you know, whatever. I don't care. Uh, Bolillo, yeah. What's up? Yeah, it's good sound, man. You guys should definitely check out the uh, Cradle Audio stuff. I think it's like super, just really inspiring sounds. Like some of my favorite stuff. All right, check it out. All right, let me see here. Oh, let's see if we can get the sound going again. Thank you. 
So a lot of the times I like to like come up with some kind of vibe and then I'll like resample it, you know. So in this case, I just bounce it in place and say like synth one, you know, whatever. It's like chord progression one, synth one, whatever. Um, and then I'll take this guy and I might uh, mess around with him. I might put him into a different key. Like for example, I might transpose it. So let's take this down maybe like uh, three half steps or something, right? And then find like a good range for my vocal, like where I would sing. And I think that always helps like get a vibe going. And resampling really just like makes things sound more interesting, you know? Like I could easily just put this in the right key or like where I want it, take it down an octave in the synth, etc. But it's going to sound, uh, you know, really perfect. And I try to sound, make it sound imperfect, you know what I mean? Um, I do stuff like that all the time to make things imperfect. For example, I might even take this and stretch it, you know? So you can just chop this into block chords because that's where you can see the chord changes. I do this shit all the time. Like maybe I want this chord progression to really stretch out um, and be in a faster BPM or something, you know? So I'll take this and I'll just literally stretch it and just see what it sounds like. It might sound like shit, you know? It might sound really bad. And um, you just have to kind of test things. And like I said, I didn't come into the studio today like with an idea in mind or a melody or something. I was just like going on freestyle.
So that's kind of tight. It just feels like it's uh, too slow. You know what I mean? So you can do things like, okay, if I like that idea and I like stretching it a little bit, you can take the BPM up to like 150 or so. And then you can do this again and just resample it. It's really simple, you know, like. Right, so like there's my idea there. Um, and then I might want to rebounce this in place and then I'll say like synth 160 BPM and I don't need to be organized right now. I just need to be like, you know, creative. I need to have fun with it and just like fuck around and, um, that's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to go bam, 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 just chop all these. And then what is this going to sound like in halftime, you know, like at 80 BPM because we're at 160. So if I stretch that, it's going to like, okay, let's try 80 BPM. I just like to get like these different textures and timbres in here that people don't necessarily like expect, you know, oh, here's an analog synth. But like you want to give them something, they're like, what is that? What is that weird ass sound? <laughs> Like that's kind of tight, you know, like, and, and I think like with the baseline, uh, let's just take this guy, bring him up here, unmute him. And then we'll go to like a bass here. I think like a really cool bass, um, synth, like something for like, you know, uh, bass stuff is, um, Spire. I think it's really fun. Like you can find some really cool, uh, like bass patches, you know, I have like these synth wave, retro wave kind of vibes. And these are really cool for this stuff. Like I, I like these these bass pas patches. Um, and then I'll just like flip through some of this stuff. You know, like this is still arping. So, um, or it's not arping, it's probably built into Spire. But I'll, let's take this down. I can take them down to a good bass range, right? And then just fine. You know, just find some cool sound here to uh, take over the, uh, the the root note. And because we did go halftime, you do have to pay attention to that. Like you can't just throw the same full time uh, track on here. Uh, there's this really cool thing in Logic, it's called Handles, and you can like come up here and you can stretch this out instead of like, for example, a lot of people take this and start moving these over and they're like, yeah, I'm going to make my, you know, I'm going to stretch my notes out. Um, you can turn on Handles, which is, I believe under, it's either Edit, I always forget where it's at, but um, I think you can just actually just time stretch this. So if I Option click this. And say it's at nine bars now, and we just double it, right? So we want to go to uh, to 18 bars, right? So bam, and there you go. So now you just doubled your MIDI lengths, right? Oh, maybe that's not right. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so 16 bars. So it's eight bars, 16. And then now we have all of our bass notes landing on the right spot. Uh, it just saves you time. You know, little little tip for y'all that are using Logic. All you not real men, according to uh, I see got it. You gotta be a real man. Use FL Studio, <laughs> bro. You're sounding goofy right now, man. Like I've used FL Studio, I've used Ableton, I've used Pro Tools. I can use all these DAWs. They're just fucking software. All right, so here we go. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> I 
I kind of like this sound as like an idea for a part, this bass. Um, so I don't want to lose it because I like the like it's kind of filtered out. It's not really bass heavy and it could be a really cool layer to a bass, but it's not it. Like we'll just say this is like bass, um, like cut through, you know what I mean? Like I always like I'm layering the fuck out of my basses. So bass cut through because like if you look at the frequency range of this, it's very, very like uh, mid range heavy, like 1K, 2K kind of area is what I'm hearing. Um, so we'll leave that and then let's copy this down and let's find like a base like sub, you know, something that's like thicker and uh, fatter at the bottom. Let's tap in. Yeah, really cool kind of just chugging uh, bass line. And I still need like more sub out of that, but um, let's see if we can like find, even just like putting down a very, very basic drum beat sometimes helps me kind of like, okay, where are things gonna sit? Like maybe the kick needs to be really big and boomy, like at the bottom sub kick, you know? Um, and I then this bass is perfect. Uh, but maybe I want the bass to be more of the sub and the kick to be more punchy. It just really depends on what you're gonna do with the drums. Um, but this is like a really good starting point for me to already just be riding on. You know what I mean? Um, I would also just like duplicate this so that I don't, um, I don't run out of, uh, space, you know, to start to arrange a little bit. Cause I, I kind of want to get inspired right away. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to like be like, oh, I'm going to have this idea and then I got to stop and like arrange something. So, um, you know, just giving it enough arrangement to mess around with something is really helpful and then um so i have like this kind of like arping thing which i'm going to get really tired of the ear is going to get tired of it right so you got to switch it up you can't just like leave this thing arping um so maybe i'll turn the arp off on this and i might move these chords around where we have like uh maybe the arp doesn't come in until after you've kind of established the chord progression if that makes sense and it should and let's make sure that we also didn't uh tune this down yeah, I think we're good. We didn't transpose this. Yeah, good, good, good. Okay. So like on here, we got to make sure our make sure our chord progression matches.
Yeah, so I'm digging that. That sounded really cool. Um, and then I almost feel like halftime drums would be really sick on this. I don't know why. I just have this like idea that halftime drums would be sick. But um, let me see here. I'm just going to grab some drums. I usually do this. I'll just grab drums from some other project that I like and that I can hear the tone of, like it fitting. Uh, I do that all the time, like just to get things going, you know. Uh, so for example, I've been working on different records with different people and I'm like, oh, okay, I know these drums would be really sick. Uh, if I just grab these, I think it's either a little bit, yeah, I want 20. Okay, yeah, so there's like some really cool like dead ass drums in here that I really like. Let's grab these guys and I can also grab the content, like just grab the drums and see if they fit. And then there's like a hi-hat pattern here as well, like a loop. I'm just going to add it all, and then I'm just going to see what it sounds like. So this would be like full-time drums um, on this one, right? So if I was to use this as a full-time drum idea, uh, this is at 150 on these hi-hats. So let's make sure that they're all syncing up. And I think like Logic sometimes just automatically does it, and then sometimes it does it off. So see like how that's off? Like that's not going to work. So what we want to do is just grab the part that it's syncing up good. Like that's still not syncing up right. So screw the hi-hat. We're not going to use that because I have to like literally like pull the whole loop out. Let me see. Is that the whole loop? Yep. Okay. And then for this, I got to like time stretch it as well. So let's make it faster. Just make sure it's on grid, you know. And it also might give a little cool texture to the hi-hats. So, and this is how I just move fast so I have something to write on, you know? Like, this is like a writing pad, if you will. And a lot of the times, you can write on, like, something with way less than this. Like, literally a chord progression. I could just write to that ARP. Um, you know, depending on how good you are at, like, visualizing the end product and how many times you've done this, you could totally, like, just figure it out, you know? Okay, so that's what I got. Uh, let's say I don't need any of those drums, and let's say I just want to use this drum pattern and see what it sounds like against this track. Let's tap in. Okay, let me uh, restart Logic, because streaming live with you guys always kills my my uh logic and i know it's because um some incompatibility with like ecamm live and logic pro or some shit but i just have to relaunch every once in a while which is super lame but yeah what's up synth principal how you doing bro it's good to see you good to see you yeah i'm getting into uh getting into some synth wave kind of stuff synth pop kind of vibes I don't know. I gravitate to that music quite a bit with my own shit just because I like the energy of it. I like the nostalgia of uh, synth wave, synth pop. Makes me want to tell stories of the past. <laughs> like straight up, that's just what it feels like. And most people that don't know uh, the genre very well, they just say, oh, it's 80s. That's very 80s. You're like, bro, you weren't, you weren't around in the 80s. Don't act like you were. All right. So let's reopen this and um, see what these like full-time drums sound like and what they feel like.
Great. So like right right away, like I can literally just write to this, you know? Um that uh that sustain on that is insane. <laughs> Probably wanna get rid of some of this icy reverb. Um but yeah, like I just try to make everything like fit in its own world. Um and also just like leave the vocal range completely wide open, right? Um a lot of people, especially in this genre, what they fuck up is this right here. They're like, oh, something's missing, you know automatically something's missing and then they go in and they start adding like leads and shit like they'll go find um they'll go find like these kind of things right right and then they'll start putting this all over it right like so they'll have this part and they'll start you know just putting lead lines all over it and then it's like where are the vocals supposed to sit you know where, where do you want a writer to write to this or do you want to just have it in as an instrumental you know so there's a big difference like if i'm writing for an artist or for a top line i'm not going to add any of that shit until i do the vocals but most like i would say if you're making records if you're an amateur producer and i don't mean amateur in like a derogatory sense i mean you're just not versed enough you haven't made enough records you don't understand the process very well you automatically feel like something's missing in this track something's missing yeah the fucking story the lyrics the melody the vocals the stacks the harmonies everything's missing right but we don't need any of we don't need to rush to the finish line with things we need to make sure we have a good vibe a good uh sound design good drums good feel to the song like i feel like i have a story already coming about by listening to this right um, and you could build this up as well. You could have just like bass and uh, this this synth, and then you can have you know things coming in and out. For example, like I'm not even using this um, synth yet, and if I pop this in, it changes the dynamic quite a bit, right? So let's I'll show you what I mean. Just with the bass drums, and then like this new arp that comes in, you know, you change up the parts by changing up. Um, the harmonic chord progression the thing that's like gluing things together rather than like lead lines and all these crazy fucking licks all over the place because a lot of people will do that in synth pop or even in pop music like they just start or guitar lines or whatever it's like nah let the let the vocal take front and center in the story like you're trying to tell a story so set a nice canvas for the story and then tell the story and sing the melodies and come up with cool lyrics and vocal things and uh if you want to go somewhere vocally that's different than the chord progression change the chord progression around you know to support that melody and that vocal and then you can add counter stuff or licks in between phrases and things um, but don't put yourself into a box so quickly and so soon um, so this could switch it up really nicely just right here Right, so simple, like I'm not getting in the way of any vocal passage or any melody stuff. Um, this is really just to be a support. And honestly, like if I was gonna write this song and make this song right now, I would take this and go, okay, um, intro, let's build an intro real quick.
right, so now I got an intro and then I'm gonna come right into probably like a verse kind of vibe or a pre-chorus vibe or something like right here. Um, so let's just map this out, right? Like let's go, um, I love using markers like these. I just go bam and go like intro. And then this will be like maybe pre-chorus, right? So for pre-chorus, maybe we change a chord progression a little bit to go back into the same chord progression for the chorus. All right, so pre-chorus and then we'll go to chorus here. So we want to switch these chords here. We want to do something different there. Might even drop things in and out, whatever. Uh, and then we'll go to chorus one. And I love getting to the chorus like as soon as possible. So for this, I'll just go to custom here. Um, yeah, 24 seconds in and you're into the chorus. Like that's, that's gonna be nice. For me, I think that's dope. So maybe intro, you like introduce something with like a really nice lyric or a lyric that captivates you, pulls you into the story. Pre-chorus, um, you drop down, you know? So for example, maybe just the drums and the bass hit right here, all right? So yeah. So you have like this like bass and chord thing. And then actually maybe you just go bam, bam. I don't know, you just have to test stuff really. Uh, but try that and then you can get rid of that. And then go into the chorus. And then chorus can be what? I don't know, you have to feel it out a little bit, but it could be like maybe just four bars, maybe it's eight bars, you know, just depends on how it feels. Um, I'd go for like a quick song with this because it's fast and it's punchy. Um, but let's see, like at the end of, that's 48 seconds in after that. So I wouldn't go that long with the chorus. Maybe this first chorus is kind of a tease, right? It's like, yo, this is, this is what you can expect, but we're gonna go a lot bigger on the second chorus, right? So here we can pull this over and we'll go into verse one, right? I mean, kind of intro, pre-chorus, chorus, verse one, kind of an interesting uh, arrangement because, you know, a lot of people are used to things like, you know, being very like intro to chorus to verse one to pre-chorus, you know, like they have like a very structured system. Just try to switch things up a little bit. So I'm going to call this verse one. So we don't even get into like the depth of the story until... 36 seconds in uh, this could be verse two this could be verse one here instead of calling it intro and pre-chorus maybe come right in with verse one it just depends like i have to mess around with this and i'd have to hum on it and shit and figure out some stuff um, but then here now we can take these guys and bring them over here and bring this back and you got chorus two there if you wanted to you could do a pre-chorus going into chorus two um depends see how it feels right but I'm just gonna hit a marker here and say course two. And then maybe here we go into a bridge, right? I love coming into a bridge or like, you can go to a verse two if you want, it's fine, whatever. Um, so see, I'm just like laying it out really quickly because I like to just have an idea, like have it mapped out super quick um, so that I'm not wasting time on this later. Because as I sing and hum on it, I'm gonna come up with different ideas and then maybe I'll move the blocks around a little bit, if you will. So then this is gonna go to chorus two. Uh, this is gonna go, maybe from verse two, we go into chorus three and maybe that's, I would keep all these choruses short. I don't think they need to be that long, but who knows? And then verse two, I just like giving it a very, very basic structure. And then we go to chorus. Yeah, yeah, maybe that'd be cool. I don't know. Who knows? Let's just hear what we got so far. And I'm just going to be humming things and like coming up with vocal ideas as I go.
Okay, so it makes so much more sense once I start humming to it, right? This is for sure not going to be... It's kind of intro verse 1A, if that makes sense. So I go like this. Intro verse 1A. And then like this would be verse 1B. So it's kind of like a pre-chorus slash second part of the verse. And then I think we go into a chorus here. So we're not going to get into the chorus quite as fast, but I think it'll be more effective. So go here and we'll turn this art back on because they haven't heard this yet. And then I love the idea of like kind of having a pause here and having just like a boom, like a snare hit. I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, I think this will be cool. This would be dope, man. I think it would have to be right on this downbeat here. Yeah, and then we'll cut this so it just like literally drops out. And maybe even a kick right there too. Keep it. All right, let's check this out. So I come in right away with some vocals. Maybe even the vocals come in before bar one, beat one. Yeah, so right there we would go into um, chorus, right? So this would be like verse 1A, verse 1B. Uh, we're looking at like 33, yeah. So it's like it's like a 32 bar kind of vibe, uh, but really it's like 16 bars, right? Because it's fast. It's 160, but we're thinking like kind of in halftime a little bit. Uh, the way the vocals would be sang. So just to give you an idea of the vocals, Here's what I think could be cool. Let's see if we could just grab a vocal tracking Bob here. Bam. So see, I, I, I grab things from other sessions a lot to move fast, just because if I have an idea, I want to just get to that idea as quick as possible. Okay. Um, and then I think we're in like F sharp minor, feels like. Don't quote me. F sharp minor, yeah. Or A major, more so. Yeah, so A major kind of vibe. There's like some uh, suspended chords in there and stuff, so it's kind of hard to tell. Um, okay, so then Metatune, we'll just put this in A major. Bop, bop, bop. And then with Metatune, I like to do like just a natural tuning kind of vibe or like a light tuning. You know, uh, you can go into pop and just do like lead vocal as well. That's always good, lead pop vocal. Um, the main thing is the speed, obviously, and the amount of tuning. I don't usually like to blend tuning, like uh, only 90% tuning. It's weird because then you're letting through the dry signal, um, but sometimes it makes it sound more natural. Sometimes it just makes it sound phasey and weird. But let's see if we could even get some ideas down on this um, vocally. See if it'll actually even work. And I'm just thinking about uh, melody for the most part and phrasing, like cadence of the vocal, right? Uh, things pop in your head right away when you're when you're just going. Check, check. check. Ah. 
And just like that, we got a little uh, crash, some weirdness going on. But we'll restart it because I, I, I want to get this melody down, even just while I'm here. <clears throat> Always good to warm up your vocals. I'm really bad at that. Because <laughs> usually like an idea comes to me, I'm just like, I got to get the vocal down. It's going to be dope. I love this. I don't know. You guys digging this so far? You like this format or is this like super boring? Because this is what I do every day. Straight up. <laughs> like just this is about half of my day is doing this kind of shit. Just like coming up with ideas and writing and sketching. I figured I'd just, you know, get on live and do it with you guys. But yeah, let's try and get this uh, this idea done. I got an idea. I got an idea. Come on, Logic. This is the hard part about streaming is like it's just not um, it's not conducive to fast fluid moving. And, you know, all these plugins and all this stuff I got to record, record and think, think about. about. But, but whatever. whatever. So high, oh, 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 So, so I, I think, think um, I think, I think I'm gonna, gonna try, try that again. again. That's, That's a really crazy, crazy latency, latency, which is hard to sing. sing. Some, some, someday. Hold up, hold up. Check. God damn, it's late. Let's try this. Crash. Okay, here we go. Sun, Sunday. Ah, check. That, that's like a little pre-chorus. like move you know you just gotta move
back in. God damn. And sometimes I don't know if that's actually gonna be a lyric or a vocal thing. When you're gone, when you're 
Forget that I'm streaming. You don't need it. You don't. You you don't. You don't. You don't need anybody. And I know you don't. You don't need anybody. You 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 don't need. You don't need. And I know you don't. You don't need anybody. You don't need on your own. So high. <laughs> just coming up with harmony ideas is probably just gonna be thrown into the trash. You don't need All right, all right. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm going to stop right there just because <laughs> I'm so tired of restarting Logic. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this. Basically, right now, I would just like write it out, start to rearrange stuff, and then um, go in and rethink some production stuff. Definitely think guitars, like uh, as far as the chords go, I always just block out chords up front, but those could change completely. You know what I mean? Like you have these chords that are like like those can turn into like you know a guitar going and 
You know, I, I just I kind of put the chords down so I can get melodies. Uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of how I start a song. I uh, just wanted to show that to you guys. I've been streaming an hour and 20 minutes now. Usually this process takes me about 30 minutes to an hour to get like an idea down that I'm digging, you know? And it might be a verse idea. And it might be a chorus idea. It might be a pre-chorus idea. It might be the drums are really dope and I, you know, rethink the chord progression and everything and I just trash everything. <laughs> uh, this might just sit on my hard drive. I don't know. But um, what I try to do really is just like let the music go through me. I try sometimes to just do that. You know, I think it's a, it's a really important aspect of creating. You should always be able to just like create music. Like uh, come into the studio without an intention and just like, let God, let the universe just kind of come through you and just tell your story or, you know, bring you back to something. Sometimes the chord progression can bring that out. Sometimes the drums, sometimes just a feeling, you know, um, it's a sound or a texture or an effect even, you know, like, uh, think about T-Pain, man. Like he wrote full records off of an effect. So yeah, go out get inspired. Just sit down and do it. I think a lot of the times we overthink the whole song production creation process. Like, oh, it's got to be awesome. It's got to beat my last song that I made. It's like, nah, you're you're getting in your head about this shit. This is art. This is like just living. This is like expressing yourself. And you don't have to you don't have to express yourself a certain way. Um you know what I mean? Like you could just be yourself and just do what you feel like doing and tell your story. Or tell someone else's story if you don't have a story to tell. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, share the channel. Subscribe to the channel. You know, I'm, I'm going to try and do more uh, streams with you guys. Uh, it is a little tough with the uh, the crashing with logic and shit. But, um, yeah, we'll get it together and we'll figure it out. And I'll, I'll start streaming a lot more. And uh, as long as you guys like it and you keep showing up, I'll keep doing it. All right. Have a good uh, Monday. Peace.